Well, you mentioned converts, and uh, one of the things that, at, at least in America, where many converts are coming from a Protestant background, one of the things many of them struggle with is our devotion to Our Lady, uh, to the Virgin Mary, to the Mother of God, the Theotokos. Uh, and you found this absolutely amazing passage from St. Gregory Palamas uh, about her uh, and highlighting her as, as our primary exemplar of how to do this thing we've been talking about. We can look, of course, to the monastic communities, but uh, even right in scripture, we can look at her life and see how this works, how, how stillness produces real action. So um, since you found it, why don't, why don't you share this, uh, this, this great passage from St. Gregory with us? And let me say, first of all, that this is from a book of sermons uh, of St. Gregory Palamas, and this is from On the Entry into the Holy of Holies 2, and it's uh, edited by Professor Christopher Vinyamin, who was my professor at St. Tikhon Seminary. So this, this is how I know about this passage. And you can get all of St. Gregory's sermons that have been edited by Professor Christopher, and there are some smaller individual books. So one is called Mary, the Mother of God, uh, that includes this as well but this is again about from the feast it is from the feast of the entry of the mother of god into the temple into the holy of holies which is one of the uh, the 12 great feasts is it not yes saying something about god is not the same as encountering him speaking of god requires that you pronounce words and perhaps that you have some skill with them if you are not just to have knowledge but to make use of it and pass it on it also requires all sorts of logical reasoning compelling arguments and worldly examples all or most of which are gathered by seeing and hearing and are the prerogative of people who spend their lives in the world they may be acquired by the wise men of this present age, even though their lives and souls may not be completely pure. It is absolutely impossible, however, to truly encounter God unless, in addition to being cleansed, we go outside or rather beyond ourselves, leaving behind everything perceptible to our senses, together with our ability to perceive, and being lifted up above thoughts, reason, knowledge, and even the mind itself, and wholly given over to the energy of spiritual perception, which Solomon calls divine awareness, we attain to that unknowing which lies beyond knowledge, that is to say, above every kind of much-vaunted philosophy, even though the purpose of the most excellent part of philosophy is knowledge. Seeking after this, for it is absolutely necessary for ambassadors to meet those to whom they have been sent, the Virgin found that holy quietness was her guide, quietness in which the mind and the world stand still, forgetfulness of the things below, initiation into heavenly secrets, the laying aside of ideas for something better. This is truly something we actively do, a means of approaching contemplation, or, to state it more aptly, the vision of God, which is the only proof of a soul in good health. Every other virtue is like healing medicine for the soul's illnesses and the evil passions which have put down roots in it through sloth. Contemplation, by contrast, is the fruit of a healthy soul, an outcome and a state which divinize a man. It is through contemplation that a person is made divine, not by speculative analogies on the basis of skillful reasoning and observations, perish the thought, this is something base and human, but under the guidance of stillness. Continuing in our life's upper room, as it were, in prayer and supplications, night and day, in some way we touch that blessed nature that cannot be touched. Thus the light beyond our perception and understanding is diffused ineffably within those whose hearts have been purified by holy stillness, and they see God within themselves as in a mirror. The immediate proof of this is the Virgin, who having kept company with quietness from the earliest age, brings the greatest benefit to us and commends to God those in need as no one else can. She alone lived in holy quiet from such early childhood in a manner surpassing nature, and she alone of the human race bore the divine and human word 
without knowing man. Let us marvel. This is astonishingly beautiful. And let me say that the stillness is, is Hezekiah, this inner stillness. And it is connected with contemplation. Contemplation here is not thinking about things with the rational mind. You may have picked that up. This is beyond rational thought. Contemplation here is that which happens in the heart, in the, in the spiritual mind, this continual prayer, this continual communion with God. Right, So the, the goal really is to have this holy quietness, this stillness in the heart, and this praying without ceasing in the heart. The rational mind can't pray without ceasing, right? You have to fo- if I have a surgeon working on me, I want him to be focusing on where he's cutting. But uh, a, a surgeon who has attained to this can be focusing exactly on what he needs to do, all of his focus of his rational mind on where he needs to cut, and all the focus of his heart on God. This, this continual prayer in the heart, constant communion with God. And this is the fruit of a soul that has been healed. This is a soul that has become like Christ, that has attained to this this perfection, right? That this perfect prayer that we're trying uh, to to reach. So uh, this is this is beautiful. This is uh, this is really an image of of the mother of God in her early life, before the incarnation, be, before Christ came to unite His divinity to our humanity. It, it's what made the incarnation possible. It is in her in her. Right, right. And it shows their preparation, right? We talk about preparation. There's an idea in the Western world among some that the Virgin Mary sort of was like almost arbitrarily chosen. And there's really nothing special about her. She was just this girl that was chosen. Uh, but there is, is something that is special about her. And the church has preserved the story of her growing up in this life of prayer, wanting to be an ambassador for us because of the fall. And wanting to bring forth uh, Christ, so that you know. And the, the important thing from the church's perspective is that who she was is is who we can be, right? That that she's one of us. The Christ is the God Man. He is Man, one hundred percent Man, and He perfects uh, our human nature from the moment of his conception, right? Um, And here we really see that the Virgin Mary, before the incarnation, embody that much as you can embody that in her time, right? And uh, and that it's it's just so beautiful. I mean, she's embodying really the height of the spiritual life to bring forth Christ. And, and Christ himself, born of the Virgin, uh, whatever needs to be completed is completed, right? He, he, he does everything for our human nature. For us to acquire this uh, stillness and this contemplation, uh, that we may fully be like him in the sense of what, what the incarna- incarnation meant. It, I think every time now that... Um scriptures being read and we get to the places where it says and and mary pondered all these things in her heart a parenthesis is going to open in my mind and this entire passage is going to go inside it uh every time i hear that phrase uh what an amazing unpacking of a few simple words uh it, it, you know a lot of people today think they're doing biblical scholarship and think they're doing uh, biblical interpretation and then you get a passage like this that comes out of a couple sentences and it's just it's just jaw dropping. And, and you know, when we think about Mary's life of prayer, then we really think about this, this, um, this event in which after she gives birth, 
Well, first, after, after the conception, right, in which Christ uh, unites his divinity to our humanity in her womb and, and, and perfects our human nature. And then she gives birth to the God-man. And she takes her son to the temple. And when, when St. Simeon tells her that a, a sword will pierce your own soul too, I mean, when we, when we think about this, about um, the, the fact that, that Mary suffered with Christ, really as, as, his, as his disciple, and as his mother, and she felt the pain throughout his life of what he experienced as his mother seeing it. It's just, it, it, it's incredible. And we realize that, that she's not just a, you know, this kind of uh, arbitrary vessel, right, that through which God came into the world. I mean, she is his mom. And, uh, and, and a mom who is experiencing his grace, right? I mean, it's, it's uh, and wherever, right, where, when we talk about grace and the uncreated energy, wherever uh, one person of the Trinity is, all the Trinity is cooperating, right? So um, we, we have, the, the, there's one grace, actually, right? There's one energy, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, that she's experiencing the power of eternity. Um, throughout her life, it's it's uh, it's 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 beautiful. But here, this this is our this is our path, you know. And and uh, we have to remember this too, right? You have you have the Virgin Mary, the most holy Theotokos, and and being raised up in virtue and turning her heart to God. And, and um, you know, we see in the church. Of the a a a, a strong uh, statement that you know she's not given any special grace to do this, right? Because that makes her not like us, right? She has the grace that is available uh, to us, and uh, and and I think we can sometimes become tempted with despair because we're like, well, we're getting a late start. I mean, I'm you know. I've got certainly got a really late start at this, but you know, let's let's think about like I mean, Mary of Egypt, right? Saint Mary of Egypt and the grace that she acquired, right? She is a saint, and she got a late start, and and uh, and and uh, and had to work through a lot, right? Going backwards, right? Work through a lot in the desert, uh, and and we have to remember that God knows, uh, God God knows where we are. Right and uh, and where we are and and our repentance and 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 to repent now we don't lose time, right? Today is the day of salvation. That's what we have to really, uh, really remember. And and we can we pick up wherever we pick up. And this is the beauty of this, right? As who is the Theotokos? Not just someone that provides a model for our life, but someone who's there interceding for us that we have this experience. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I mean, that's just so beautiful. It's fantastic. Uh, yeah, I, um, just the other day I entered my second half century, so I'm, I'm getting a very, very late start 